I'll see to it that you get a kick up your derriere with my non-disclosed invisible elbows, you pricks! Oh, well hey guys, you're probably wondering why I'm in this ironclaw jail cell. Uh, let's just say it was research for today's review. One of our regular informants, a Mr. Robert Wolstein, gave me this dossier overlaying a certain old franchise, and it's my job to go through the entire work with a fine tooth comb. So while I wait for my eventual release from this prison, I say this is the best time as any to get that done. Now without any more distractions, here is the 1990s sci-fi edgy comedy, Burn Up. Hey, don't they get my one phone call! IN THE FUTURE! During the age of our Chrome Dome overlords, new methods of panic and mayhem run rampant in the streets of Neo-Tokyo, and it's up to the agency of its technologically advanced police force to save the day. But when a terroristic plot becomes too much for even the normal officers to handle, then the task is given off to the secret fighting force known as Team Warrior, a battalion of specially skilled officers who outweigh normal protocol in order to get the job done in the only way they know how. The Burn Up franchise pertains to four titles across three main campaigns, the original Burn Up from 1991, the Excess Universe in Burn Up W and Burn Up Excess respectively from 1996 and 97, and the alternative universe in Burn Up Scramble from 2004. This brings me to the main problem of all three. Regardless of which one you watch, once you finish one, there's really no reason to watch the others. Unless you're watching chronologically, the original OVA felt like a conceptual stepping stone for future installments, which I believe was the point. So this this leads us to Excess and Scramble, for if I had to give you the short answer, the better in my opinion is Excess hands down. Plot wise, each has a similar pacing with a case of the week type deal, but Scramble's problem was that the connectivity of its plot felt more like an afterthought. Now I can forgive Excess part of the way because not only did I enjoy myself despite it's only in the 90s issue, but it was a show that displayed that sweet, sweet mantra of heart before art. Excess's second core really helped flesh out Team Warrior in a way that Scramble could barely keep my attention for. The way it gives a colorful bouncy edge to most of its main cast and supporting cast was the spunk it needed to bring it to the top. Again, in Scramble's case, I wouldn't say it doesn't have any merits at all, but I can't think of any, which adheres to the show's bland outlook. These unique differences does in part bring us to the characters in that much I said about the plot can still apply. The only change I'll say as a devil's advocate is that in Excess's case, it had much more characters to bounce off from in where Scramble really really only had the four to interact with. Ryu Kinazono in all iterations can be summed up as that go-getting, living life to the fullest brawler who's just trying to make it by in this world. For the original in Excess, she was the glue that really put everything together, opposed to Scramble's Ryo, whose boy-crazy attitude and more disciplined family background kept her slightly different. A good perk for Scramble as a whole, I could never consolidate whether I preferred this Ryo over the other one because of that. I will say though that a slight tweak in visual expression really could have done wonders for her character. Sure, Excess Ryo would also love to be in a fine pair of testosterone own, but she would easily drop a man for the sake of a bigger paycheck. She was very loud, whiny, and irresponsible, but she had a good heart for doing the right thing. As for the original Rio, I can see that she is a happy medium between the other two, more brash than Scramble's Rio, but calmer than Excess's Rio, and I think that's because that unlike the other two, she already was someone's girlfriend. Yuji's girlfriend. What? Ah yes, now here's an interesting tale. Yuji's role in the franchise is about the same throughout as a supporter behind the scenes, but unlike Ryo's subtle changes, Yuji's was not so uniform. It's no surprise that unlike Ryo's case where Excess Ryo became my favorite just by a hair, Excess Yuji was the clear winner here. He reminded me a lot of the main character of Golden Boy, a goofy open pervert who was also an intellectual badass. Yeah, his stuff got old real fast, but taking him away from the show would be losing a third of the series' heart. Originally, 
original Yuji just doesn't get that much time to develop and is left to be a generic awkward shell, while Scramble Yuji gives me a very mixed signal overall. Another important character that I just have to talk about is Excess's Maki. Her addition in Excess made it clear that the show was trying its best with what they had. I won't say so much because so much of her character arc is tied in with the plot, but I will say that she is a strong character that with the flaws and all, will never let anybody take her down. For Scramble, the major difference I saw was that they turned the once hacker genius Lily Cut Yvette into psychic prodigy Lily Cut Yvette. A little odd, but it works as something different, but good. Lily Cut is a meek, self-doubting, and worrisome person who doesn't want anyone getting hurt from her powers, but soon she learns to loosen up to the others for her own betterment. I just wish the climax didn't have to use her for something so predictable in the end. But I digress. Overall, the plot and characters across the entire franchise reflect upon themselves in a way that keeps things somewhat entertaining and even surprised me when I got a few laughs in. But with all pun intended, the commitment it lacks trying to do something and spectacularly failing is very criminal. And now it's time for our fun-filled segment, The Community Corner. The time where I give a shout out to other creative outlets in the anime community in hopes that more people will have a look-see. Today I'll be talking about an actual website, which I don't consider often, but since this one was suggested by one of you guys and looking at it myself, I can't lie, it did win me over. So to clarify, hashtag not a sponsored ad. Hashtag might as well be an ad, but I like you what I saw, okay? So sue me. Moving on. Pagey World is the Tumblr of artistry, a deviant art in Instagram love child, a global community where you can spill all your creative juices in a new horizon. This site is great for seeing different art styles from around the world, from anime art styles to more realistic ones and cosplay to beyond. They even have fun themed events you can participate in for your own pleasure, which is really neat. So if you're an artist looking for a new platform to mark your artistic territory or simply an avid lover of the arts from afar, then stop Stop on by pagyworld.com from your PC, iOS, or Android device and get your art groove on! Now if you know of any creative outlet that needs attention in this world of anime, either comment down below or at amshannon on Twitter with the hashtag community corner and tell me all about it. With outreach more important than ever, even though I may be one girl on the internet, I will always try my best. Okay, so this is one of those series that honestly hasn't aged well. But frankly, why am I sitting here telling you that when you can already see that for yourself? All three shows have that issue of low-quality animations, tilted scenes, and reused footage, so much so that it's a no-brainer that it felt like a throwaway vote from a production standpoint. X's, on the other hand, was the worst offender objectively. The changing room scenes popped up more times than you can shake a metaphorical stick at. But here is where I'm at an impasse. What is really worse? X's 90s animation being poor, still but vibrant and colorful, or Scramble's animation being more put together but forgettable. It's one thing that an older show wouldn't age, but you'd think a more recent installment would showcase some type of individuality, and yet Scramble was so very bland. I'm talking blander than the blandest brand flakes. It's passe, it has boring set pieces, character designs, and fighting sequences to boot. How Ever. The biggest factor that really helped each installment has got to be the English dubs, and I don't mean for quality reasons either. At least for me, watching all three with the access to the English dub made it so much more bearable and accessible to watch. I will admit that it did get awkward sometimes. Some voices were not as bad as I thought they were, to be honest. Still very grainy, but in short felt more like a so bad it's good type dub. Access had a better range of performances, with Allison's Keefe's Nonvel and Jason Lee's Yuji being the standouts, while Scramble had re played by Julian Taylor, who honestly carried that show. Besides voices, I have to give props to Excess's opening, for actually being an opening, which is sad. It was fun to watch every now and then, which I wish I could say the same for Scramble, that instead went for this really lazily done cut-to-cut -cut sequence of scenes. Now, I may be no openings expert, but even I can see that this was a whole pot of lazy. And don't get me started on those title cards. Oh, so lazily done, I just wanted to... Breathe, breathe, we're just about to wrap this up. The final thoughts are almost here, and there's nothing else in our way. Oh, hello, little sewer rats. What do you mean I missed talking about one? Nope, I don't think I did. I No, 
We haven't missed nothing. It doesn't exist. Let's just move on to- Fine. No normal intro, we are just doing this. Spoiler warnings and all that good jazz because it's time to rant about this black sheep burn up W. In this OVA, we followed Team Warrior for four episodes, doing business as usual, all the while an evil organization's puppeteering something sinister in the background. Now here I was thinking, oh cool, it's a fleshed out version of the original OVA, something I was kinda asking for. But you know what became the thorn in my side for this series? Her. No, not her. Her. Let's call her Bait Chan. Just like in the original, Bait Chan here is Ryo's more wise and responsible friend who in Burn Up W gets development and all the bells and whistles for a good point in the LBA. And then they killed her. leaving Ryo to curse the big bad guy leading to a burn-up scenario very reminiscent of the original OVA. But this time it leaves us on a gripping cliffhanger! Oh no, what will our heroes do? I hope we get to know more about the coming excess anime no Not at all. In fact, excess pretends like W never existed! <laughs> There's no mention of the big bad guy lady, the device she was holding, and certainly not Bait on here. Just an unnecessary tear-jerking moment that got passed off to the wayside to restart a brand new unrelated plot. What in the flying- <laughs> But W just gives the audience a big middle finger by making this OVA in the hopes of finishing it and start the actual series with a completely unrelated story. It's a fucking waste of time and you don't figure that out until the very end. I was seething with anger during my marathon of this franchise because it felt like time could have been easily spent just moving on to excess. If you do have the time for this series, I highly recommend you just skip it like that gutless fish it is and move on. It'll make us all happier in the long run. I came into the Burn Up franchise with a pretty low bar of entry, but I was surprised of how much I was enjoying myself, even if somewhat. For all purposes, Exus is the only real contender, but this contender surprised me with silly etchy antics wrapped in a heartfelt ride in the world of police politics. It's definitely not a hit out the park compared to other shows of its time, let alone today, but it's an okay reminder of how simplistically quaint etchies can be. So after some consideration and scaling 142 feet in the air and nothing but my birthday suit only to bungee jump down, I award the Burn Up franchise with a recommendation to try it and a watchability rating of PG-13. Individually, the original OVA and Scramble are a denied rating, with Excess breaking out of the pack with a solid tried rating respectively. Between the lack of streaming options for all series and Excess just being completely out of print, trying to obtain the entire series is a challenge that's not really worth investing in. But ironically, for our Etchy series, this is pretty tame, so if you like Etchies on the lighter side, then you are in decent company. As for anime alternatives, today I thought it would be nice to recommend titles from the Girls with Guns subgenre. First up will be Dirty Pair and Gunsmith Cat, older anime that we have occasionally talked about here on the channel, and if you like the sillier banter of gals on a mission to fight some crime, then you've come to the right place. The next recommendation will go to the anime El Calcador de Bruja, a show I personally love as a great bargain bin hit for its strong female lead and interesting Southwest American setting. And finally, a blind pick, but one I should definitely get around to watching, Noir. Another Girls with Guns anime with a slightly somber tone. Funnily enough, it's a show that is Bruja's predecessor, so hopefully I will enjoy this one as well. So with all that in mind, I give regard that you'll find something here that will pique your interest. Oh, so I get to leave now, huh? Stupid petty prison system. But what wasn't petty and very helpful to today's review was our patron, Robert Wolstein. For without his actual DVDs he lent me, this video wouldn't have been possible. As for everyone else, thanks for watching as always. Okay, okay, I'm leaving the premises. At least let me finish my outro. Jeez. So comment down below on what you guys think about today's review. If this was your first time here, then howdy. Why not subscribe? And random question of the day, how do you keep yourself from being late to work or school or just up in general? I really hope I get to read some cool comments soon. In the meantime, this has been Shannon. <laughs> That has been my ride in the Uber car, and I'm going to be paying more gratuity than I ever actually will be. So until next time, stay tuned to Anime America.
Want to support the production? Check out our brand new store on Store Envy. For a small price, you can have a one-of-a-kind poster made by yours truly. If you can only give a small amount to help us out, check out our Patreon page. Any amount you wish to give us goes towards our production needs, so anything you can give us helps us a lot. To keep up with the latest in Anime America stuff, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and even Tumblr. Be sure to like, favorite, and subscribe to Anime America for more awesome reviews and top 10 lists. If you're interested in anything of pop culture, be sure to subscribe to Pop Spectrum. Thank you all for watching, and stay tuned to Anime America.